Growing up with an identical twin brother, we found more than our fair share of mischief to get into. It ranged in varying degrees of seriousness depending on our mood, and yes some of it was not exactly legal such as the time my brother took my written test for me at the DMV because I would freeze up during time tests and he didn't have that issue. In return I may have accompanied his girlfriend to a chick flick movie he didn't want to see. That one would have worked had he not gotten jealous and decided to show up anyway at the last minute. I don't know who was angrier, the girl, her father, or our mom. No matter, it resulted in us both being grounded for a month. When we were 16 we both went to work at a fast food restaurant a few blocks from our house. The job sucked but we wanted to buy this Ford Mustang we had seen listed for sale. We had worked out our plan perfectly. Each of us would save half our paycheck until we could afford it, and then we could use the fact that we had saved the money ourselves as an arguing point if our parents tried to persuade us not to buy it. Yeah, we thought we had it all worked out. We could not have been more wrong. Oh, we got the car. We also got a ton of unexpected and expensive repairs that it needed before it could pass a state inspection and legally be driven. Essentially, the Mustang ended up sitting in our driveway for the next four months while we worked on it. Our parents were offering no help either. At the time, I thought that it amused them in some sick kind of way that our freedom had been put on hold. Looking back now, I know they were teaching us to become independent and to solve our own problems. Finally, the day came when we passed inspection and could now drive. That's when the real issues began. It was a constant fight over who got the car which nights, whose turn it was to put gas in the car or pay the insurance. Another thing our parents made us do ourselves. For the first time since birth, we actually came to throwing blows. On the last weekend before summer ended and school started back, we both had the night off work and had both lined up dates. I know the simple solution would have been to double date however the girls we had asked out hated each other so that was not an option. Our dad got tired of us arguing and made us flip a coin for who would get the car and he would allow the loser to drive his Oldsmobile which was as long as a boat. I lost the coin toss. Later that night when my brother was getting ready for his date, I crept out the house and drove off in the Mustang. I knew I would be grounded later for it, but there was no way I was driving my dad's car. After picking up my date we headed to the movie theater. I can't even remember what movie she picked because I was more interested in doing the old yawn and stretch to put my arm around her. In fact had I not been so focused on that I might have noticed that two guys had followed us into the theater and sat down directly behind us. About 15 minutes into the movie I felt a knife at my throat. One of the guys ended up being her ex-boyfriend, and he told me that I could walk out the theater with him or his friend would begin carving her up. Glancing over I saw that she also had a blade resting against her throat. I had no choice. I stood up slowly and walked out the exit closest to the screen. No sooner had the door shut behind us than I felt the blade go and repeatedly. Then he was running. I could taste blood in my mouth and feel its stickiness as I lay on the ground gasping for air. An older couple rushed over to me and the guy sent his wife to call for help. We didn't have cell phones yet. I could feel myself slipping away and see everything going black. The next thing I knew I was standing face to face with my aunt who had passed a few years before. I felt a sense of love like I had never experienced before and there was a light that this love seemed to originate from. He wants to meet you, my aunt stated. Are you talking about God, I questioned. She didn't answer, but instead took my hand and led me to a great door. It was the largest door I had ever seen. As we approached the door opened on its own and we entered a large room. On both sides of the room I could see angels and at the end of the room there were steps leading up to a golden throne. On this throne sat a man. His face was like the light in that it radiated. Come, he beckoned me forward. I approached the throne, and I don't think I have ever been so nervous. I had no idea what was expected of me. Was I supposed to bow? Take a knee. What? Evidently he could read my thoughts because he suddenly laughed a big hearty laugh 
and said, none of that is required. Just come. This set my mind at ease to a degree. When I reached the throne, he asked me, do you know me? I replied with what I thought was the correct answer and said, God. The man again laughed and said, no, that is my father. I am the son, the one known as Jesus. Why am I here? I asked. I wish to show you, he answered. As fast as he said it, I found myself standing by his side in a great city unlike any found on earth. The streets were literally golden in color, and there was the sweetest music I have ever heard that was just there. Everywhere I looked there were small orbs of light flitting all over the place like they had a distinct destination. What are those orbs? I asked. Those are all the souls of the departed that have been allowed to enter heaven, he stated. And the souls that weren't allowed in, I asked, just as fast as before I found myself standing on a mountain overlooking a deep chasm. Inside the chasm, there was fire and molten lava, and there was an intense heat coming from this place, yet it did not burn me. Below I could hear the cries of anguish from all the tortured souls. I looked at Jesus and asked, Can you not save them? I did save them, he replied before adding, this is the path they chose for themselves. I want to leave this place, I said. We were now back at the throne. Why did you show me that I questioned? I wanted you to see your choices for when your time on earth is done. Jesus then went on to tell me that I would be going back to my body and that it wasn't my time yet. He also cautioned me that my time left on earth would be full of strife, but I must not allow earthly situations to dictate my future decisions. Before I left, I asked him to elaborate more on this strife I was to face, but he would only say I would recognize it when it arrived. I woke up in the hospital with my parents and my brother sitting by my bed. My first thought was that my date was in trouble and needed help, but I found out that the guy holding a knife on her walked away as soon as he saw me exit with his friend. The police were looking for both of them, but my date was home safe after a brief stop at the hospital to check on me. Next I told my brother I was sorry for taking the car the way I did. He said he forgave me instantly and was just glad I was alive. Next I told everyone about my meeting with Jesus, and of course they said it was the medication as I had never flatlined, but I ask you, if God is all-powerful, do you not think he could allow the visit without me being dead? I don't think I have faced the strife Jesus referred to yet. Oh, there have been times that were a struggle but nothing severe. Looking at the world events today, however, I do believe it is coming soon.